Hello everybody, my name's Martin and I'm one of the laser techs here at South London Makerspace. This video is the induction for our laser and for the software that runs it called Ruby. This is what we're going to cover in this induction. We're going to talk about our laser, health and safety and machine maintenance before talking about the steps that each member does at the beginning of their sessions a little bit about Ruby, the software that powers a laser. And then a little about the steps that members do at the end of their laser sessions before we do a quick walkthrough of a simple laser project and talk about next steps. And this is our laser. It's a Trojek BD300. It's a 60 watt CO2 industrial laser cutter. For comparison, most domestic laser cutters are 10 to 20 watts. It runs on software called Ruby, which is an industrial version of software like Lightburn and Laser GRBL, and it replaces Trotex Beaver's software called Job Control. The laser has a removable sacrificial aluminium honeycomb bed, which the laser techs maintain and replace as it gets damaged with use. It's got a large cutting area of just over 700 by 400 millimeters and the bed can be lowered by 200 millimeters which is handy if you would like to laser items like boxes for example because this is a laser health and safety is very important do not leave the machine unattended in use do not override safety mechanisms for example the mechanism that stops the laser when the hatch is open only inducted members can use the machine Use the power switch to shut down the machine in the case of issues, for example, the laser comes across an obstruction. There's a CO2 fire extinguisher next to the machine for emergencies, for example, if there's a fire. If anything doesn't look right, stop what you're doing, shut down the machine and message the laser techs on discourse. Only use permitted materials in the laser. Any other materials can cause serious damage to the machine or to your health. For example, non-laser safe plywood may contain glues that becomes toxic when vaporized by the laser. The Makerspace has a material store of suitable plywood and acrylic, which you can pay for online using the QR codes. Our laser cannot cut metal, only fiber lasers can and ours is a CO2. However, it can be used to engrave anodized metal, but you must check with laser tacks first to make sure that the right material is being used. And if you're ever unsure about the material, always check with the laser tacks. The machine is routinely maintained by the laser tack team. And at each laser session, members do checks before and after their sessions to make sure that the laser is well maintained. And if there are any problems, we'll support them on discourse and tag the laser tags. And now I'm going to show you the steps that you do at the start of every laser session. The first thing to do is to turn on the PC. When the PC boots up, it will send power to tool control. The PC might already be on, but asleep. If you move the mouse, that should wake it up. Hold your membership fob next to Tool Control and give it a few moments to sign you in. Tool Control controls the communications between the PC and the laser. Use the power switch to turn on the laser. Give it a moment to start up, to lower the bed and to home the gantry. Use the controls on the right hand side of the machine to move the laser gantry in bed to a comfortable position. The red buttons and black arrows move the laser and the black buttons and the red arrows move the laser bed. Carefully check the laser bed for any debris to make sure that it is a flat, even surface for your material. Unscrew the nozzle in a clockwise direction and check it is not dirty from laser residue. If it's dirty, spray it with the anti-static foam and wipe it with a paper towel. Once clean, you can 
return it to the later gantry by screwing it in an anti-clockwise direction, being careful not to over-tighten. Unscrew the lens holder by rotating it clockwise before carefully removing the lens. Check the lens for any dust or scratches. If there's any dust, you can blow it away using the puffer or by putting a drop of solution on the lens and using the lens cloths, carefully dab, don't rub, until the dust and solution is removed. If there's any unexpected scratches, please report it to the laser tax. When returning the lens to the gantry, be careful not to over tighten and give the lens a little wiggle to make sure that it is held in place. Carefully unscrew the two bolts and remove the mirror panel. Check that the mirror doesn't contain dust or have any scratches. If it does have dust, blow the dust off with the puffer or put a drop of solution on the mirror and with the lens cloth, carefully dab, don't rub, until the dust and solution has been removed. If there are any scratches, please report them to the laser tax. When returning the mirror, be careful not to over tighten the bolts. When inserting the material into the laser, it's important that it is flat and stable. You can pin the material down using the wooden clamps. It's important that the material is flat to ensure an even laser focus throughout the job. And finally, take the focus stick from the lip inside the laser and balance it on the laser gantry. Slowly raise the laser bed up until the material knocks the focus stick off the gantry. Don't forget to put the focus stick back on the lip once you've finished and close the laser lid. It's important that you repeat this focus step any time you change the material during your session, even if it is the same type of material as you've used previously. Now the laser is ready, we can turn to the PC and your design. Ruby is a software that a laser uses to create and manage laser jobs. It supports vector and raster file formats. Vector formats, including SVGs and Adobe Illustrator files, can be used to both cut and engrave material. Ruby uses a specific color palette to assign these laser actions. You can download supported color palettes for Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer and Inkscape from the tools page. Master file formats, for example JPEG and PNG, can only be used to engrave. For example, engraving a photo onto material like this tiger example. Ruby has limited editing functionality. It's always best to go back to your software of choice, for example, Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer or Inkscape, to make any changes to your design and re-import your updated design to reduce any issues. There's a few steps you need to do on the PC to log into Ruby. On the PC, go to the toolbar on the right hand side and right select the Ruby icon. Go to laser mode and make sure Ruby is selected before choosing open Ruby. And then log in. And this is Ruby. While we're here, Click on the username on the right hand side for you to change your password or to log out. It's important to log out at the end of every session because even after the PC is restarted, Ruby likes to remember the last person who was logged in. Ruby has four key screens that you'll go through step by step when processing a laser job. The first screen is a manage screen where you can view and manage existing laser designs and laser jobs. This is the Manage screen, which contains your designs and jobs. Designs are your images and jobs are designs with extra information 
for example laser location and material settings. You can Import a new design by clicking on the import icon and selecting your file and then you'll see it appear in your list. You can also drag drop one or multiple files directly into your design list. You can also delete individual files by clicking delete icon or download a Ruby file of your design for use at a later date. As you can see, the icons are the same in both the designs and job screen. You can select multiple designs by clicking on the checkboxes on the left hand side to do a bulk delete or bulk download. The next screen is the design screen where you can view and edit your designs or fix any errors before sending them to the laser. To get to the design screen, click on the design icon on the top toolbar or double click one of your designs from your manage screen. You can select one of your existing designs by selecting them on the left hand side. You can also import a new design clicking on the import design icon from the toolbar. Your new imported design will appear on the left hand side for you to select. Along the toolbar on the top, we have new design to create new design, save and save as to save your work, a generate stamp wizard, some select and drawing tools, including add image and add text, undo and redo, some zoom options, you can also zoom by using the mouse wheel. And some basic shape merge tools, though we recommend you use your software of choice. The screen has some other useful features. The first one we're going to show you is the ability to trace a bitmap or JPEG image into an outline. After importing your image, Select it and click on the Trace Image icon and then click Trace. As you can see, it's created an outline of the design which you can use in the laser. Another useful tool is the Nesting tool when you have a design that is spread out. If you select all of the items in your design and then click the Nesting tool, The system will do its best to nest your shapes to make the most use of the material as possible. This feature is also very useful with the Fit to Design function which shrinks the canvas to the minimal distance around your design. One common error that we see is when you import your design but the design doesn't contain any colour that is supported by Ruby. As you can see, it's flagged by the exclamation mark. All you have to do is tick the select next to it and choose a colour supported by Ruby. Another common error is when you want to cut out a shape but it is filled in. For example, I want to cut out this M. If it is left as a fill, the laser will not cut it because it will have to cut the entire space of the shape, when in reality we want to just cut around the outside. So to fix this, we need to change the shape into an outline. We can do this by clicking the shape and clicking on the Fill Object button, which will flip it to an outline. This design will now be able to be cut out by the laser. Another common scenario is when you've imported design from your own computer which contained fonts that are not supported on the PC. The way you can get around this is in your software of choice, change your text into shapes or sometimes called, called curves. Once this is done, the design will reflect what you expect. And as you can see, it's turned all the text into shapes 
rather than text. Once you've got it designed that you're ready to laser, you can click on the create job icon to move it to the next screen. And that screen is the prepare screen where you'll position your finalized design onto the laser and choose the relevant laser settings. To go to the prepare screen, click create job on the right hand corner. The main window represents the laser bed and where your design is placed on it. Along the top toolbar, you have new job. You can import existing jobs. You've got save and save as to save the jobs as you go. There's the calculate job time button, which will calculate the estimated job time of your job based on your chosen material. There's the basic select and drawing tools, undo and redo, zoom options, and you can also zoom using the mouse wheel or right click and drag to move around. There's some alignment distribution tools, an option to turn off snapping, which you'll learn more about in a moment. There are some camera options that our laser does not support and buttons for the rotary and stamp modes. The crosshair represents the laser in relation to the laser bed. You can drag and drop the crosshairs to move the laser or use the button controls on the laser machine itself to move the laser and therefore the crosshairs around the laser bed. You can drag your design anywhere on the laser bed to represent where you would like the design to go. You can also slap your design to the laser crosshairs, either to the corners or to the center of your design. You can use the options on the right hand side to rotate or flip your design or to resize it. You can also resize by dragging the corners of your design. Next is the material database, which contains the settings needed for each material to be used in the laser. You can search for your relevant material by clicking the drop down and typing. Any entry starting with SLMS are material settings set up by the laser tags with the material available in the Makerspace store. Any user can create a new material entry. So there may be more than one for the material that you're wanting to use. It is worth looking at each one to find the one most suitable for your needs. Underneath each option of your chosen material are some basic settings. P represents the power of the laser and V represents the speed of the laser. You can view and edit the settings for each option by clicking on the drop down arrows. The colors automatically assigned to actions by the material database might not match what you want for your design. To change the colors assigned to each action, click on the color and choose the new action. In this example, I want black to be for cut and red to be engraved. If you don't want a color assigned to an option, you can set it to unassigned, so parts of your design in that colour will not happen in the laser job. You can click on the edit or pen icon against your design to take it back to the previous screen, where you can make any changes before clicking on update job to go back to the prepare screen. There is also the array tool which allow you to make a grid of your design. You can also use Ctrl C and Ctrl V copy and paste to have multiple versions of your design on the prepare screen. Going back to the example earlier where I wanted to cut out the M, once I select the material I want, red is assigned to cut. As you can see on the design, Ruby has greyed out the red meaning that it will not be actioned when it's sent to the laser. To fix this, 
I click on the edit button to go back to the design screen to change them to outline before sending it back using update job. As you can see now, once the material is selected, the red cutout is no longer greyed out, so it's ready to be sent to the laser. As a quick summary of the prepare screen, once you've selected your design and moved it to where you'd like it to appear on the laser, you select the relevant material for the material database and check that the colours are assigned to the actions that you need for your design. When sure happy, you can click push to laser to move to the produce screen. And finally, the produce screen, where you run and manage jobs that have been sent to the laser. To go to the produce screen, click the push to laser button on the right hand side. In the produce screen, you can see your design on the right hand side, your selected material, and what actions the laser job is going to perform. Before continuing, check the laser one last time to make sure that the gantry is not going to hit any obstructions when the job is run. For example, the clips used to secure the material. When you're ready, hit play. As you can see, the play button turns into a pause button, which can be used to pause the job if you need to leave the machine unattended for a moment. There is also a stop button that will stop and reset the job in the event of any problems. When the laser has completed the job, you'll see a screen like this. You can then repeat the steps to prepare your next laser job to be ready to be sent to the laser cutter. If you want to keep your current job on the produce screen without going back to the prepare screen, for example, if you want to send multiple engraved tasks to the laser, you can keep them by unticking the remove completed jobs from queue checkbox. This will keep your current job on the produce screen on the left hand side. You can clear the queue on the left hand side by clicking at the bin icon on the bottom. Once you finish your laser jobs and come to the end of your session, there's some important steps that each member needs to do in order for the laser to be maintained to its highest standard. First, remove any excess material from the laser bed. If any part of the material is still usable, you can donate it to the space by putting it in the communal bins. If not, please put the material in recycling. Next, check the laser bed to make sure there is no debris left behind. Please also lower the bed and open the front hatch to remove the laser bed and brush any excess. When returning the laser bed, make sure it slides back onto the guide rails and is secure before closing the hatch. Similar to the beginning of the laser session, remove the nozzle and check and clean any residue. If you've used any material such as leather and nylon that produces a lot of residue, remove the lens holder and clean it to reduce any buildup. Carefully inspect the mirror and lens for any dust or scratches. Be careful not to over tighten when returning them to the gantry. Tap out of tool control to sign off the machine. It's important to log out of Ruby because the PC will remember the last person logged in. If no one is scheduled to use a laser for a while, shut down the PC. And finally, make sure the laser station is left in a clean, tidy state for the next member. We're now going to put in practice everything we've just shown you with a quick walkthrough of a basic laser project. First, we're going to tap into tool control to sign in. And then turn on the laser. Once the laser is homed, we're going to inspect the nozzle, lens and mirror to make sure there's no residue, dust or scratches.
We're then going to check that the laser bed is free of debris before setting down our material, checking that the material is flat. If not, we use some clips to hold it down. Using the controls on the laser, we move the laser gantry over the part of the material we intend to use. We then pick up the laser focus stick from the ledge inside the laser and set it against the gantry. We then slowly raise the laser bed until... 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 Once we're confident the laser is focused, we pick up the laser focus stick, pull it back on the ledge, and shut the laser lid. Once I'm logged into Ruby, I start on the Manage page. I'm going to go straight into Design and Import Design, selecting my design which will appear on the left hand side. I click on it, and I'm happy with how it's turning out, so I'm going to go straight to Create Job. From here, I'm going to position the design to where I want it on the material before moving the crosshairs to move the laser gantry to double check that my design is going to go exactly where I want it to be. Once I'm happy, I go and choose the relevant material for the material database. I double check that the colours correspond with what I want in my design. In this case, they didn't, so I'm going to change them to what I need them to be. And once I'm happy, I'm going to click Push to Laser. I'm going to double check that the correct material and settings are on the screen. And do one last check on the laser to make sure I'm happy before I click Play. The laser will now start doing my design. Once the job is finished, we open the laser lid and then move the gantry out of the way. We carefully tap the design to make sure it's kept through before removing the material and the design. As this is the only design I'm going to do, I will then perform the end of session steps that we've previously covered. We've covered a lot in this induction, but the final question is what's the next steps? If you're not already inducted on the laser, book yourself on the next laser induction session to do the practical steps and to get your Ruby login. Check out the Lasers Tools page on Discourse. It has further information about the laser and links and videos to features we weren't able to cover today, like the rotary tool for laser engraving cylindrical items like glassware and the laser stamp making feature. Church Hack have an official website for Ruby that contains other guides that is well worth checking out at rubyhelp.com. Brendan, who is the head laser tech here at the Makerspace, has literally written the book on laser cutting. Check out his website and check out his book. There are some very useful generators online. Some of my favourites are makercase.com and boxes.py which contain wizards to create lots of different boxes and shapes that can be built on the laser. And finally, we recommend having a play with pre-made designs, which you can find on Google or searching Etsy, to get a feel for manipulating designs and how the laser can help. And with that, all that's left to do is for me to say thank you for your time, and I hope you find this video useful. If you do have any questions, reach out to the laser techs on Discourse and we'll do our best to answer them. Goodbye for now.